this feels less like a movie and more like a home video movie parody on steroids. But it's probably still better than Dragon Ball Evolution. Plus, this guy from Squid Game is Goku. Now, I'm not sure whether to try to actually critique this or try to ironically enjoy it. Given my love for the franchise, I don't know if I can do both, but I probably would have enjoyed it as a kid while recognizing the cheapness of it as I love the old Godzilla films and can defend those a little bit better. But it's just so bad. It's incoherent to the point of absurdity. So many scenes randomly jump around to different locations and the jump cuts are galore. I had a hard time not only paying attention and staying engaged, but even understanding what was happening in portions. It's so silly throughout. Like, Oolong wears this like inflatable head mask that you'd see like a mask wearing sometimes that just makes it plain stupid and there's a laughable shoestring budget production design and raditz is here as murasaki what a weird lore change my transforms into a giant centipede pilaf is crazy strong it's faithful but I don't know if I'm supposed to laugh here. It's all so confusing and why they made some of these creative choices. And so I end up just laughing a bunch of times. Credit where credit is due. The wire work is crazily edited and very obvious. It's not in a good way, but it occasionally looks cool. It reminds you of something like Power Rangers, where it's just, there's a odd satisfaction in it. And there's a strangely endearing quality to the practical effects overall. Some of the martial arts are actually surprisingly decent, even though they're not shot well at all. And that's about it. There's some impressive stunt work too. But those little changes aside, it's actually very, very accurate to the source material. They even go out of their way to watch the original anime at one point on screen as some kind of meta moment, I suppose. But at times it's too accurate for better or worse when it comes to the tone, because sometimes things need to be changed in an adaption so it translates well. But at the same time, I can't help but notice and respect the love of the source material on display here, and that goes a long way. It at least got me thinking how easy it is to condense the storyline of Dragon Ball into a film that covers a lot of ground. Man, this one honestly can be pretty painful to sit through. It's barely watchable, but I will say this. When you make me smile with what you're haphazardly trying to do and it's executed badly, and I'm still having a decent time, I suppose that counts for something. Not enough to save it from being predominantly cringe and obviously a bad movie, but I've gone back and forth already on this rating a few times. It's just too silly to spot a few guilty smiles. And it's sad to say that this is one of the more faithful adaptions. I give Dragon Ball Zero, otherwise known as Dragon Ball, Fight Son Goku, Win Son Goku, one out of five stars. It's crazy that I was even able to find this on YouTube with English subtitles. It's wild. There's also three sequels that, I don't know if it's a series or three individual sequels, and I actually added the films to Letterboxd uh, just so other people could log them, and then after I did it, somebody did one as a collection of all three. So if you see them on there, use, use Letterbox through there with links. I kind of browse through them as there's no subtitles available, so I won't be reviewing them. And I do plan to watch them, but Goku becomes a secret agent of some kind and like fights the Saiyans as they invade. I think Nappa's in the second one. Uh, there's someone he fights called the Black Dragon Clan. There's some crazy stunts involved, and I'm looking forward to checking them out at least for the sake of research for myself. But as I went through these, I just had to remember, always look for the good.